Um, does it benefit Jeff uh, to work as a five off the bench as opposed to having to play against Ford? I think he's done well both at both this year, but uh, he kind of carved a niche out the last four or five years since the bubble, really. I mean, his previous stint with Houston at the small ball five, did that with Denver as their backup, and some with us in Brooklyn, so he's really good at that spot. He was versatility, a little bit different look there, but at, at times you see he's finished this year uh, against his ex-team, Denver. At the four against Zion Williamson, so versatility in general is good, and I think he's done a good job with both, but he has an uh, advantage at the five most of the time. What do you get back when you get Jabari back? What do we get like, back? Like, what do you get back when he's on the Yeah, I mean, the shooting, obviously, uh, there's a high level. I think he had really kind of found the groove over the last, mm -hmm. you know, few months for the ankle, obviously, but just know that scoring threat is not some versatility and moving around the court, um, but also versatility in size defensively, so it makes us a bigger team in general. Just a guy that's finding his way in the second year, really improved in uh, offensive glass. He's really been good with him and Tari. We're great at that, so we're missing that with both those guys out. And, you know, just him and Kendrick and Pearl and both, on both ends of the floor. So uh, it's a subtle thing at times, but when you have him and Tari out and Dylan and trying to, it kind of shakes up the rotations and some guys' natural spots in, the, in them, what they do well. Is Tari still on track for full contact this week? Yes. Coach, um, what has it been like to see um, Amin Thompson adjusting to our whole all around players? And most, and most noticeably, um, his performance and effort on the defensive side. Yeah, I would say the defense is one of the things that we thought translated immediately to the NBA. Um, versatility and size and athleticism there. Checks a lot of boxes. Um, you know, offensively, find his way as well, how he can impact the game. Obviously, and for him, the biggest thing is not when he doesn't have when he doesn't have the ball. You know, he's such a ball dominant guy his whole life. And, Knowing how to play off the ball, learn to impact the game on the offensive glass and find his spots and not take the shots that the defense wants him to take. So he's taken a big step lately. Um, I think obviously the ankle and being out for a month plus kind of hampered his growth, but um, you know he's, he's been good since he's been back. And not, not only visually we see it, the numbers show it as well. Coach, speaking of uh, our man, we talked to him and Cam earlier today on the shoot around, and you know both of them had high praises for LeBron, but they're also looking forward to competing against him. What does that say about your rookies to have that type of confidence and want to compete against, you know, someone like LeBron? I think most young players, you know, idolize certain guys in the league and uh, they all look forward to playing them as well. And so, uh, I mean, you know, he's one who's been around that they've all grown up watching. And so um, for the guys that haven't played against him, I'm sure the first time is, you know, a moment they've been looking forward to. But uh, what I tell the group is to, basketball at the end of the day and not back down from anybody and take the challenge and so um, appreciate the moment I guess but don't respect them too much and, and play like you don't really against anybody else. With Cam in particular are you surprised by just how quickly his playing time has escalated where basically in a span of about a month he's gone from not in the rotation to someone who's now a pretty big part of your formula did it surprise you at all was there a light bulb moment coming on just talk about his I guess growth over the last few weeks. You know, the initial thing was a log jam, and you know, he was behind a little bit coming into his rookie year, but he was kind of forced into it um, with, with Dylan and Tari being out, so the minutes were available and he's taking advantage there. But he also took advantage of his opportunity playing in G League in those games he played with Sharp and showed growth and, and progress. And so, um, you know, might not have been the happiest about it at the, at the time, but uh, it did the right thing with it and showed improvement. And so, the game slowed down for him uh, defensively. Offensively, we know he's going to be already an aggressive guy, and it's really about shot selection there. Defensively, um, the communication, the awareness, those things have improved. And so, just kind of forced into it by right? guys being out, but guys coming back now, he's still in the rotation in the mix, and he's doing well. Just got to continue to stay on that path, and they're going to have their ups and downs, some you know, off games every, every other night, as young guys do. But uh, he's been good on both ends, and we need him to continue to focus on the defensive end. The offense is kind of second nature to him. You said he was behind a little bit. What, what was he behind in? Understanding schemes and communication. A lot of these guys, we're asking them to communicate and switch more than they ever have. And um, when you're a guy that's usually keyed in on guarding a matchup, guarding a man, taking somebody out, whether it's you know one-on-one -on -one or getting through pick and rolls, getting through off ball, sometimes they're a little slower to recognize and see everything on the court. Um, you know, We want to be a disruptive defense, switching a lot, taking away plays. but. A lot of times they see it a step late, a step slow, and so some of the mistakes, the uh, help side, it's not just the individual defense, it's us as a collective team, and so those things were a little bit behind, but a lot of the field guys were, honestly, and it was just making a few more mistakes and things he had to play through, and like I said, to have the minutes in Rio Grande, uh, 
really gave him an opportunity for the game to slow down and kind of get the schemes down. I've seen, I've seen Jeff talk to Jabari a lot of practice. How do you think Jeff has influenced Jabari in his second year? Yeah, it's been good for him. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, the wings or the guards take the guards under the wing, and, and, and Jeff has done that with Alfred and, and Jabari. And so, you know, talk to him about longevity, professionalism, day to day approach. And I think just watching Jeff go about his business has been big, but also pull him aside and uh, give him pointers as well. So, but it's important for a guy that's out there doing it as well. So, Jeff has done that, um, impact our team uh, in a huge way, and um, imparting the wisdom they has in playing for 35 years. How, how important has a how important has a coach Sutherland been to our men? I heard that they work a lot after practice during shoot around. Sometimes, you know, they they come together even when there is no practice just to work together. Yeah, he's been big for him. I think we really want him to focus on the shooting aspect initially, but um, you know, that's we kind of pick and choose who we want to work with who. And, and Ben's worked with some guys over the years, Giannis, and different guys that want to improve their shooting. So that's a big piece of it. But also, um, you know, being a good cop, bad cop with me and, and kind of staying in his ear. And um, I think they, you can see that that bond growing between them and that's what we want our assistants to do. I hire certain guys for the relationship aspect to be really relatable to our guys. And um, you know, everybody coaches them up, but we have some specific bonds with other guys and they've hit it off well and that'll be good for him going forward in the future. But um, the shooting piece was initial, but they find found their own side relationship, which has been good. Every player wants to play, of course, in the fourth quarter in crunch time. I have the young players handled, you know, sometimes not being able to play late in the game, um, depending on how they play for, uh, through the first three quarters, it's, and specifically Shane Goon. And is that part of the, you know, coaching them hard that y'all talked about before the season? Yeah, I think it's foreign to some guys. And even in the NBA nowadays, a lot of coaches don't do it. But um, for us, it's you get rewarded by what you've done on the court. And um, guys, for the most part, have bounced back and played well through it. Um, you know, the good games like, for instance, Jabari didn't finish two games. I mentioned Jeff played extremely well against Denver and New Orleans. And uh, that was the case the other night with Jeff uh, guarding Jeremy Grant well and Aaron Holiday coming in. So we didn't have Dylan in the game. So it's going to happen at all times. The majority of times guys will finish. But um, if the guy's rolling, the guy's playing well, they know that I'm going to play the guys that are playing well. So up to them to take it how they want to take it. But a lot of guys have responded well. Jabari has, Jalen has, and see how Alfie does now. Thanks, Coach.